Ever considered what your reaction might be if, out of nowhere, you received an electric shock? Picture a typical day. You're at home, basking in the soft morning sunlight that falls onto your favorite reading spot. You're casually moving around, humming a tune, dusting off the surfaces, and arranging the old family photos on the mantle. The scent of your favorite cleaning solution fills the air, intertwining with the aroma of the freshly brewed coffee waiting in the kitchen. Suddenly there's a jolt, a wild, uncontrollable thrill that races through your body. It feels like a thunderous lightning has decided to make its way through you. You feel energy, the immense power, surging from the tips of your fingers, coursing like a rapid river through your veins, pulsating and electrifying every cell in your body. You're in shock, literally and figuratively. What would you do next? How would you survive this unexpected turn of events? To start with, always ensure to disconnect the power source. When dealing with electricity, it's critical to comprehend that the initial thing you do if you experience an electric shock is to sever the connection between yourself and the power source without delay. Neglecting to do so can result in life-threatening situations, such as severe burns, cardiac arrest, or even death. If the source of electricity is a household appliance, like a toaster or a fridge, your first instinct should be to unplug it. Do not touch the device directly as it could still be charged. Use a piece of dry, non-conductive material like wood or rubber to safely remove the plug from the socket. On the other hand, if the electrical source is a power, it's crucial to move away as quickly and as safely as possible. Under no circumstances should you try to touch or move a fallen power line. The ground around it may be energized, and stepping in area could lead to a severe or fatal shock. In summary, disconnecting the power source promptly and correctly is paramount in preventing a minor shock from escalating into a dangerous and potentially fatal situation. You might be curious, what happens if mobility isn't an option for you? What if the shock is so severe that it paralyzes you, locking your muscles in place and making it impossible to move away from the source of danger? This is a frightening, quite realistic scenario where electrical shocks could cause temporary or even permanent paralysis, a phenomenon known as electroparalysis. Your muscles might contract involuntarily and you could to release an electrified object or move away from the current source. In such situations, it becomes crucial for anyone present to act quickly and appropriately. The first step is to disconnect the power supply. This is often done by reaching for the main electrical switch, which can usually be found in an electrical panel in your home or workplace. This panel is typically a gray metal box, and the switch is mostly the largest one, often marked as a main or primary switch. Turning this main switch off immediately cuts the electrical supply, hence stopping the current causing the shock. Alternatively, if the main switch can't be accessed for any reason, a non-conductive object like a wooden broomstick could be employed. You can use this to push the person away from the electrical source, ensuring not to touch the person directly, as the current could pass to you as well. Next, it is critical to underscore the importance of remaining calm. Sure, it's easier said than done, but maintaining a serene mind, unperturbed by fear or panic, is crucial. The reason behind this is quite straightforward. By keeping a clear head, you can correctly evaluate the situation, rapidly process information, and make appropriate decisions. When you are calm, you act instead of react, giving you better control over the situation. This ultimately leads to taking necessary steps that are pivotal for ensuring your safety. So, how do we stay calm under pressure? The process begins with deep, controlled breathing, this simple act slows down your heart rate and helps your brain to focus. If possible, take a moment to close your eyes and center yourself. Visualize a positive outcome to help quell the onset of panic. Mindfully distancing yourself from the negative emotions that arise in stressful circumstances will also serve you well, allowing you to approach the situation from a place of calm and rationality. Practicing these steps will enhance your ability to remain composed and respond effectively to ensure your safety. After you've safely detached from the electric source, it's essential to meticulously check your body for any possible injuries. Burns, ranging from first to third degree, are the most typical. These can appear as minor redness, blisters, or even charring of the skin in severe cases. Apart from external burns, internal injuries also occur. These can include damage to your heart, nerves, muscles, and other tissues, Due to the path the electrical current may have traveled through your body, 
you might experience irregular heartbeat, muscle pain and weakness, numbness or tingling. In addition to these, an electric shock also cause broken bones or dislocations if the shock caused you to fall or be thrown. Furthermore, you might not immediately realize a cause for concern, as some injuries may not be externally visible or immediately apparent. Therefore, you must call for professional medical assistance right away, even if you feel unharmed. Keep in mind that the effects of an electric shock can be delayed and might not surface until hours or even days later. Your body could be in a state of shock, potentially concealing the severity of your injuries. While waiting for medical assistance to arrive, it's of utmost importance to position your body properly. You should aim to lie down with your head slightly lower than your chest and your legs elevated. This isn't just any arbitrary posture, but a strategic one designed to enhance your safety. This position, known as the shock position, plays a crucial role in preventing shock, a potentially deadly condition that warrants immediate medical intervention. Here, the gravity works in your favor to enhance blood flow to the vital organs, particularly the brain and heart, by reducing the workload on the circulatory system. The raised legs aid in returning more blood to the heart, thereby improving cardiac output, while your lowered head position reduces the chances of cerebral edema or swelling in the brain. This way, even before medical help arrives, you're taking preliminary steps to maintain a stable condition and fight against the shock. Remember, such small adjustments can make a profound difference in critical situations. So, it's not just about adopting a position, it's about life-sustaining positioning. Should your breathing become challenging, it's advisable to adopt the recovery position. Commence by slowly turning onto your side, ensuring you're shifting your weight gradually to avoid any sudden discomfort. While on your side, gently bring up your knee that's on top, so it's at a slight angle relative to your body. Your other leg should remain straight for balance. Carefully adjust your bent knee until it is moderately curved, like a half-folded leaf. This position not only aids in keeping your airway unobstructed, but also acts as a safeguard against choking. It serves as a barrier, preventing vomit from traveling back into your airway in case you initiate regurgitation. Should you or someone else fall unconscious, the immediate action to take is to perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation, more commonly known as CPR. If you're not trained, don't worry. The dispatcher on the emergency line can guide you through this life-saving process until professional medical help arrives. To begin CPR first, ensure the person is on a flat surface, lying on their back. Start with chest compressions, interlock your fingers and place the heel of your hand in the center of the person's chest. Push hard and fast with each compression around 2 inches deep. Ideally, you want to aim for 100 compressions per minute. After 30 compressions, give two rescue breaths. Tilt their head back slightly to open the airway, pinch their nostrils shut, cover their mouth with yours, and blow until you see their chest rise. Repeat these cycles of 30 chest compressions and two rescue breaths until medical professionals arrive on the scene. Remember, in such situations, every second counts. Acting swiftly could be the difference between life and death. Always remember that survival during an electric shock hinges on immediate swift decision-making and instant action. The first thing you need to do is to disconnect the power source is at all possible. Timely disconnection of electricity can significantly reduce the impact of the shock, preventing further harm. Even in this stressful situation it is critical to maintain your composure and stay calm. Panicking can lead to further complications and can prevent you from taking clear and necessary actions. After ensuring you're safe, evaluate yourself for any visible injuries. Burns or other electricity-related injuries may not be immediately apparent but may internal implications. As soon as you can, call for professional medical help. It's crucial to get assessed by a qualified healthcare provider, as electric shocks can have delayed effects that aren't immediately obvious. In case you find yourself or someone else in a critical condition, lie down in a recovery position. This position helps maintain clear breathing and allows fluids to drain from the mouth, the risk of choking. If the person has stopped breathing or doesn't have a pulse, performing CPR can be life-saving. Make sure you've had proper training to perform CPR correctly. Incorrect technique can cause more harm than good. Prevention indeed is always better than it's essential to stay alert and aware of your surroundings. Be cautious around electrical equipment, especially in damp conditions, as water is a potent electricity conductor and can increase the risk of electric shocks. Always use electrical appliances as per manufacturer's instructions to avoid any mishap. Prudent use of electricity, 
along with an understanding of basic safety measures, can significantly reduce the risk of electric shocks. Remember, your safety is in your hands. In our concluding remarks, it is essential to understand that enduring an electric shock necessitates a swift and sharp mental response, immediate action, and a foundational understanding of first aid principles. Quick thinking is important as it helps you respond effectively and swiftly to the situation. Being able to identify danger, judge situations accurately, and take prompt decisions can greatly enhance your chances of survival. Immediate action is just as crucial. The faster you react to an electric shock, the better your chances of minimizing harm. This could mean pulling the plug, turning off the power source, or calling for help as soon as possible. Moreover, having some first aid knowledge is invaluable. Understanding how to treat burns, perform CPR, or use a defibrillator can sometimes make the difference between life and death. Education in basic first aid techniques provides you with the tools, stabilize someone until professional help arrives. However, let's not forget that the optimal way of surviving an electric shock is to prevent it from happening altogether. Staying safe involves being conscious of your surroundings, being aware of the potential dangers, and having a healthy respect for the sheer might of electricity. It's a force that, while indispensable to our modern lives, can also be a formidable adversary when mishandled.